What's up, y'all? This video is the final update on the Summoning 2018 Paleo Art Contest, in which I'll be announcing a whole bunch of awesome honorable mentions, as well as the final winner to receive the cash prize for their amazing Paleo Art. I am super stoked at how this contest went. I am thrilled that I got around 120 entries in all different mediums, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I had a heck of a hard time narrowing it down to a handful to shout out in this video and a single winner to give the cash prize to. So first up in basically a sculptural category are these amazing origami dinosaurs by Travis Nolan. These are his original origami designs and I had the pleasure of meeting Travis at SVP and he showed me how he designs these incredible folding patterns which allow him to turn a single sheet of paper into a three-dimensional sculpture. And I was just blown away. There's a completely alien art to me. I also got an origami submission from a guy named Adam Chen. He submitted this beautiful Therizinosaur origami. Other notable sculptural entries included this Lystrosaurus emerging from its burrow by Tyler Keeler. Tyler Keeler is an incredibly experienced professional paleo art sculptor. It's a great honor to have him in the contest. And the piece that he exhibited is really cool because it shows a Lystrosaurus emerging from its burrow, which is something that's indicated by the fossil record, and it's a neat behavior. In that vein, I received two other really amazing sculptural entries that showed behaviors and uh, hypotheses that really haven't been depicted, as far as I know, in sculptural paleo art before. First off is this amazing Deinonychus sculpture by Pedro Salas. It shows an adult Deinonychus as a ground-dwelling animal and a juvenile as a gliding creature. This is a hypothesis that has actually been proposed for some dromaeosaur dinosaurs. And it's really cool to see this illustrated in three dimensions as this sculpture. Perhaps the most spectacular sculptural entries that I received were from a guy named Vitor Silva. He did several amazing pieces including a prionosuchus but also this amazing little mini diorama showing a spinosaurus hunting near the edge of the water or actually about to maybe consume its prey near the edge of the water and uniquely instead of showing the spinosaurus just eating fish he's got it uh, about to eat a plesiosaur which is a plausible prey for spinosaurus but something that's not illustrated that often What's really amazing to me about these sculptures is the technical accuracy and detail of these things, despite them being at a small size scale. So for starters, we have this gorgeous environment scene by Carolina Tuardas. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing anybody's names, especially people with Eastern European last names. I have no idea how to pronounce your last name. Anyway. This scene is really nicely done. It shows a, a view looking up from the forest floor as a Jehelopterus pterosaur swoops overhead. It's very nicely rendered. The perspective is on point. The plants are reasonably accurate. There's a cool little amphibian lurking down here. And the lighting is really interesting. It reminds me of the lighting you would get if you had a headlamp or a camera trap sitting on the floor of, the, of this ancient forest of the Jehol. Also really pleasant to look at, we have this nice reconstruction of a diving sloth by Oliver DeMuth. Oliver uh, does really beautiful, clean work, and I just there's like a peacefulness and a serenity to this scene. Moving a little further in the direction of storytelling, we have this cool Dicynodont scene by April Neander. These animals have uh, bright colors on the strange knobs and ridges on their faces, and it looks like what's happening here is some type of a territorial standoff. So for me, one of my favorite things to see in paleo art of any kind are scenes that really tell a story and which are imbued with detail and life, such that you can look at them a bunch of times and see all kinds of fascinating things going on in the illustration. I'm happy to say that maybe my favorite piece in the whole contest, at least in terms of how much joy it gave me, was done by an 11 year old. This drawing was done by Gianni Crowell. If you look closely, there's a lot going on here. This Rugops with really uh, wild plumage and soft tissue reconstruction is devouring some type of a carcass that's skewered on a tree with flies buzzing around it. The tree actually has air roots, so there's some type of botanical detail going on here. This would have to be an old gnarly cypress tree. If you look on the ground, there's actually a dinosaur skull with plants growing up through it. This is taphonomy represented in paleo art. 
If you look in the background, there's a Spinosaurus with what appears to be display features on its sail. And it may be guarding a nest. There's something next to it that looks like it might be a nest. In the background, there's another theropod and a turtle crawling out of the pond. So that even though this is an 11 year old's pencil drawing and uh, Gianni has a lot to learn about kind of the technical aspects of, of rendering illustrations, it still has a lot of cool things going on for it. There's character, it, it has a, f a wild mood to it that's really fun, it has depth, and there's a lot of little details that are inferred from what we know about living animals biology and hypotheses about how these animals may have lived. I found this piece to be really fun. It makes me smile every time I look at it and I'm stoked to shout it out in this contest and encourage Gianni to keep making art, keep doing research, and keep refining your skills. Next up, we have a really unusual piece by a friend of mine from middle school who I haven't even seen since middle school, but who is now a professional artist. Even though he's a professional artist, he's never done paleo art before. He's taking a screen printing class right now and he created this aqua print etching on a zinc plate depicting a cartoonish Nothrotheriops giant sloth with a uh, with a primitive human pursuing it from behind. This is inspired by the human in sloth footprints found down in White Sands, New Mexico. This has everything. It has a researched environment with uh, accurate plant life. It has interactions going on. It's based on the fossil record. And it's in a really fun, wacky, cartoony style. It's very true to Danny's character. So big shout out to Danny Lawler for entering this piece. It's, uh, it's great to, to see you after all these years in the world of paleo art. Next up in the category of storytellers, we have another pencil sketch. This one by Vietnamese artist Koi Wen. Koi is a paleontologist and in his pencil drawing here, he has reconstructed for the first time a Devonian Vietnam marine fauna. He calls this scene the playground bully because the central creature in it is this weird fish called Ban Hoa Apsis Vukhusvi. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, but it's the largest galliapsid fish from Vietnam. The surrounding creatures are a variety of other um, galliapsids as well, as well as placoderms, so the really ancient jawless fish interacting in this weird shallow marine environment reconstructed for the first time. Next up is another dynamic scene. This one by Dominic Grabowski, AKA the Stolpergeist. You can follow him on social media. He consistently puts out really wild and fun illustrations of prehistoric animals. Another scary as dark and pterosaur scene. It comes to us from Zupin Eric Duta showing a giant Quetzalcoatlus whose wings have become tattered and so this animal has taken up a life as a terrestrial predator. If you look around, you start to get the sense of this really creepy scene. I love the mood in this piece. Another great spooky scene comes to us from Joshua Nupa, who depicted this Temnospondyl trapped in an underground cave based on the fossils from the Richard Spur paleoenvironment. Next up is Stephanie Dizik's Majungasaurus scene. If you look around this scene, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. The Rapidosauruses in the background are retreating from a recent attack. The Majungasauruses are resting in the foreground. And yet even though these predators are resting, they're still scary looking. They have an ominous presence about them. They look like predators. And I like that about this piece. That said, my favorite thing about this piece is this Rhyonavis popping out in the middle ground. Like, if it were on the African savanna, you could imagine the lions lounging after a failed attack and then some goofy mongoose or something popping up from the bushes. It just has that feel of, like, just a natural balance of life and a fun story going on in it as well. This one is one of my favorites. It's a scene called The Wrong Branch by Liam Elward. I think it's really great. It shows a sauropod dinosaur upsetting a bird's nest. The eggs are hatching and the bird in the scene is trying to attack the eye of the huge sauropod. Next up is one of the most technically proficient pieces in the entire contest. It's a really beautiful scene showing two Pelicanomimus. I love that these things show signs of sexual dimorphism. 
dinosaur skeletons very often don't show clear signs of sexual dimorphism. So this artist has shown sexual dimorphism with the color of these animals' plumage, which by the way is expertly rendered. The texturing on this whole scene is gorgeous. There's a lot of interesting little birds flapping around. The Pelicanomimus in the background has a little amphibian snack that it pulled out of the wetlands. It's a beautiful scene. I'm, I'm so stoked to see something that this high a quality of technical mastery entered into this contest. Speaking of technical mastery, the next entry is, I, I guess I would call my runner-up. This piece is truly stunning, and it's by a luminary in the paleo art community, Julius Chetany. Julius's background is actually in microbiology, and everything in this scene is informed by the microbiological conditions that we would expect in the Lagerstadt type deposit that preserved Archaeopteryx. What we see here is a dead Archaeopteryx drifting down to the bottom of a lake where there are anoxic conditions. It's drifting through a cloud of sulfur bacteria that are these purple bacteria that we see in modern lakes and ponds and swamps where there are anoxic conditions towards the bottom. At the bottom of the lake, he's got these bizarre tendrils of bacterial mats reaching up, almost like the underworld reaching up to collect the Archaeopteryx. This is a beautiful scene that illustrates taphonomic theories, and yet he's articulated it in this almost like symbolic, powerful way. And it's, I just think, a really stunning, powerful scene. Now, our final winner in the contest is a very high level paleo artist that I uh, only recently heard about. This person's work is done in traditional medium and it is incredibly detailed and I think the best fulfillment of the challenge that I put out in this contest to create scenes that are full of both detail and scientific information but also have a mood and feeling of character and a sense of story or story-like situation. This art has entered three pieces, all of them are solid, but I'm going to talk about my two favorite ones here. The artist is Esther Van Hulsen, and the first piece I'm going to talk about is this one called Ichthyosaur Love. It depicts two ichthyosaurs in some kind of a courtship embrace. Now, like Julius's Archaeopteryx scene, it looks simple at first glance, but there's actually a lot going on here. One of the animals, the one on the bottom, is covered in these scratch marks. This is inferred from what we see in modern dolphins and other toothed whales who often rake each other with their sharp teeth as part of territorial or um, just dominance combat, essentially. In her scene, the animal on the bottom is much more scratched up, implying that it has kind of some type of a different life role than the one on top. With reptiles and with sharks, they often the male bites the female during mating, so this could be a female scratched up on the bottom from you know being basically attacked by mates, or it could be a male who's been fighting for the right to breed. We don't know, but it's a beautiful scene, and I love that it focuses on something that's often overlooked in the world of animals and reptiles, and that's basically affection and courtship rituals. These things are often overlooked in paleo art, and I've never seen anything like this done with ichthyosaurs. In addition to that, it's the technical mastery and rendering is extremely high level, and it's all done in a traditional medium of acrylics and colored pencils on board. This ichthyosaur piece is really nice, but what clinched the victory for Esther was that she followed it with this piece. This piece is called Ida is Born, and it is a depiction of a baby Darwinius opening its eyes into this amazingly complex jungle world based on the Eocene of Messel. What I love about this piece is not only is there a sense of character, but there's incredible detail in the environment which kind of contributes to that character situation. It's an interesting creative choice that she didn't show the mother's face. I really get the feeling from this like the mother is very tired, maybe from giving birth to this creature or from you know, protecting her offspring in this wild world. And if you look around this scene, there are all kinds of neat details in the foliage as well as bugs and other animals hiding amongst the foliage. Hiding the mother's face focuses the viewer on the face of the baby, 
who is looking out into this wild, unusual world. And I just love the sense of character and drama and intimacy in this piece, as well as the incredible attention to detail throughout the entire environment. So I want to give a huge thanks and a shout out to Esther for entering this contest. I think the work is visually stunning and it does a great job responding to the challenge I put forth with this contest. And that was to create paleo art that's imbued with story, a sense of character and mood, as well as scientifically informed detail. I also want to give a huge thanks and shout out to all of you who entered the contest. I wish I could have included every piece that I enjoyed thoroughly in this contest video, but it would have taken forever to finish the video and it's, it's already way too long. So I want to give my sincere thanks to all of you for entering. I'm stoked at how well this went. Uh, in addition to that, I want to say that if you disagree with who I picked for the winner, that's totally fine. But I hope the way that you'll show your support for original paleo art or the paleo art that you think is the best is by actually supporting the artists who you think are doing great work. I've put links to all the artists that I shouted out in this video in the video description below, or at least the ones that provided me with a link. And in addition to that, you can go to the Facebook, the group Facebook page, and you can check out the hashtag on Twitter and see a whole pile of artwork and process sketches and everything submitted by these people. I'm really happy to say that the overall tone of this contest was really productive, positive, and constructive, and I'm super stoked with how this went. I hope you guys are too. Thanks for watching, and uh, maybe we'll do this again next year.